If you ever saw a picture of some words and thought, that's really cool. I like the font, I like the color, I like the texture, but I wanna change what it says. Today, we're gonna to show you how to match all of that in Photoshop and then completely recreate it. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Ace. We got some awesome features in Photoshop to show you, including match font, which will automatically find your font and match it. Let's jump in and show you how to do it. So the first thing we're gonna do, take a look at this beautiful image. We got this nice crackly texture here on our font. I wanna match this. So we're gonna go up to where it says type at the very top and down to where it says match on match font. And then we're just gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see you got this little box. You just wanna make sure to put it right around the font that you actually want to match. So let's just make sure that it, yep, goes right around this bed and breakfast. Fantastic. Now here on the right hand side, you're gonna see it says match font and it's searching for our fonts. So it's gonna find the fonts. You gotta be connected to the internet to do this, by the way. It's gonna find the fonts that it thinks are similar. There we go. And you can go ahead and download them. So let's see, this one is really cool. This Cabazon regular. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this download there and it's going to download it onto my computer. Fantastic. I think this one is really cool too. This Avibri inline. Let's go ahead and download that as well. So it went ahead and downloaded these fonts. Now here on the left-hand side, you can see this list on the very top is what's downloaded. I'm gonna go ahead and click here on the star, boop. And I'm going to star those so I can get back to them very easily at a later time. Okay, so we've got all these fonts here that look pretty similar and I went ahead and starred them all. Let's go ahead and hit okay there. Fantastic. So we're gonna zoom back in here. The next thing we wanna do is hit T for the type tool or you can just click here right on your type tool. So let's go ahead and click here and I want to type in, I'm going to say uh, Aaron, <laughs> my name, Aaron's, there we go, Aaron's bed and breakfast. Let's go ahead and just move this right to about here for now. Okay, now your color, it might have come in like a different color or something like that. If it did, simply click right here in your contextual taskbar where you see the color, click there and then you have a little eyedropper. You can just go right and just mirror the same exact color. All right, there we go. And that's pretty close. We'll hit OK. So now we have basically a pretty similar font in a similar color. Now we downloaded a few different fonts so we can check those out. Let's go right here in our contextual taskbar where we see our font. We're going to click on this little down arrow here. And then you can see by default, you're going to have a huge, huge font list, right? And you can see some of these are starred and things like that, but it's going to take forever to go through them. So what we want to do is right here, it says filter, all classes, creative cloud, go ahead and click on this star, boom, click on that star. And this is going to be your star fonts. And then you can kind of just hover over each of these. There we go. And this is what it thought it was going to be. And now we can get an idea of what it might actually look at. Let's go ahead and move that over to the left hand side. So I can see both at the same time. So we just hover over these and we can see which one of these might actually suit our image the best like what what looks most like the original font you know uh i like this one a lot i think this amador regular is pretty good actually yeah i'm, I'm happy with that font there okay so now where we have aaron's bed and breakfast all right well let's say we i want to do a few things here okay the things that I want to do is I want to take some of this texture from my original font and I want to make sure that that shows up over top of Aaron's. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you how to grab that texture. First thing we're going to do is basically select these original letters. So for now, I can make this Aaron's layer. I can make that invisible. Okay, let's go ahead and click on our background layer and we're going to go to our magic wand tool. Okay. Let's go ahead and click on these letters and you can see it turn them into a selection. Fantastic. I've got my tolerance set about 80 and then I've got sample all layers checked. Okay, let's hold shift and then click on each one of these letters. There we go. Whoops, just hit control or command Z if you accidentally click on the background, no big deal. We're just gonna click on all these letters and you can see they're selected now. Okay. Now, sometimes when it makes a selection, it's gonna select a little bit of the black on the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and shrink that selection just a little bit. So up here in our contextual taskbar, we have our selection uh, options here. We're gonna go down to where it says contract selection. Okay, and we're just gonna say five pixels. So let's just type in five and hit okay. So you can see it kind of just like shrunk this down 
And that's just going to ensure that it didn't select any of the black background. Okay. It's only selecting inside these letters. Cool. So now that this is selected on my background layer, what we're going to do is just duplicate this selection to a new layer. So to do that, just make sure you clicked on your background and hit controller command J. There we go. And then here we have our bed and breakfast. You can see just these letters on a transparent background. So fantastic. I can use these however I would like. This layer one, we'll just type, type in, we'll just call it type. Okay. So now how do we, let's go ahead and turn this errands back on. How do we like take that texture and put it over top of errands? Well, literally in our layer stack, we're going to take this texture and put it over top of errands. Okay. That's step one. Okay. Step two, we're going to grab our move tool over here and we're going to like literally click and drag it right over top of errands. Okay. So this is step two. Fantastic. And then step three is I want this layer to only be visible where errands is visible. Okay. And to do that, we're going to go up here to layer, and then we're going to go right down to where it says create clipping mask. Now a clipping mask is going to make this layer only visible where the layer right under it is visible. So let's go ahead and create clipping mask. Boom. Okay. And now you can see exactly that. So this layer, basically it's this font is only visible where this errands is visible. So I'm taking that texture and I've copied it right to errands. Let's go ahead and zoom in and show you how that looks looking fantastic. Now, of course, it's just like basically like individual letters where we got this texture from, right? So it's not going to fill everything up, but that's not that big of a deal. All I have to do is duplicate this type a couple of times and move it around. So it fills everything. That's it. Controller command J and we can see, yep, that's what it looks like. We can go ahead and move it over there and then we can convert that to uh, a clipping mask. So again, I showed you one way you can go to layer and then down to create clipping mask. That's one way of doing it. You can also right click on your layer and go down to create clipping mask. There we go. Or the keyboard shortcut on a Mac is option command G. All right, let's do that again. Controller command J one more time. Option command G is the keyboard shortcut for creating clipping mask. There we go. I'm going to do it one more time. And after a few different times of this, there we go. We can see I've basically filled in everything. So now basically all of the original errands, there we go. I didn't get every, every, everything. And my perfectionist side is like, make it perfect, Aaron. All right. So you can see now it's filled in errands with that original texture. It's looking really good. Aaron's bed and breakfast. It looks almost like it's perfect. The last thing is you can see the edge of the original font, the original text here is a little bit soft in terms of the edge. The edge of this is very, very sharp. Like it's a very hard edge. So we can go back to this Aaron's layer. Okay. And just convert this to a smart object. And then we'll put a tiny bit of a blur on there. So we'll go to layer then down to uh, convert to a smart object. There we go. Smart objects and then convert to smart object. Perfect. So now it's a smart object. You can see we have our little smart object icon looking good there. And we'll go to filter. We'll go down to blur and I'll go down to Gaussian blur. Just a tiny bit of a Gaussian blur. You can see here, uh, there we go. Here's that zero pixels. And I'm just going to hit the up arrow a couple times just so the edge gets a little bit fuzzy. There we go. And I'm at like 0.7 pixels. There we go. 0.6 pixels. That looks pretty good. Now I can zoom in here. Take a look at this. And I can just turn the smart filters off and on. So you can see it's subtle, but that little blur is going to make it look a lot more like it actually fits into this image. And if you want to change that blur, all you got to do is double click right here where it says Gaussian blur, just double click right there. And then you can change this number here and make it, you know, less of a blur or more of a blur. I'm going to go a little bit less 0.4. There you go. So it's a subtle thing, but adding that a little blur really makes a difference. And now we have Aaron's bed and breakfast. Now I'm going to take this one step further. Just why not? Right? So let's go ahead and take this out. I'm going to just shift click all of these. There we go. Aaron's bed and breakfast and group that together. Now I'm going to make this invisible for now. And then we're going to just select this text again. So let's hit W for the magic wand tool again. I know we already did this, but we're just going to do it again. It won't take long. Just hold shift and just click on each of these letters. Okay. There we go. Each of these letters is selected. If you select too much, just hit control or command Z. There we go. 
Now, what we're gonna do is go up here to our selection editor. We're gonna go to uh, expand selection and I'm gonna say 10 pixels. That looks great, 10 pixels there and hit okay. Cool. Now, let's click on our background layer. We're gonna go to generative fill and click on generate. This is a great way to just completely get rid of the original text, right? We can just simply remove it if we want. There we go, we can see that it's uh, generating now. And boom, my original text is completely gone. And now I just have, it says Aaron's. So let's just go ahead and bring this to the center. Now, remember what we did earlier is we converted this to a smart objects. So right now it just says Aaron's, but I basically can't edit this type anymore because I applied a blur to it. But actually I can because I made it a smart object. So look, all you have to do is just double click right here. Boom, boom, double click on your layer. It's gonna open up that smart object. See, it says it here, it just says file, save when you're done, errands. And now I can edit this text. So if I want to, let's just hit, uh, here we go. I hit C for my crop tool. Let's just crop this a little bit bigger. There we go. And then I can say Aaron's bed and breakfast. All right, let's hit, uh, go to our crop tool and then just make sure that this is all selected. There we go, Aaron's bed and breakfast and hit enter. And then again, you just hit controller command S to save this and then controller command W to close it or you can go to file and close. And it updates it here in this uh, new document, my original document rather, Aaron's bed and breakfast now, you can see, there we go. And then I still have all of this really nice texture over top of the bed and breakfast. I might have to just like duplicate these a few times and move them around just to make sure that the texture actually covers everywhere. But we can see, there we go, just duplicate that a few times, controller command J, and then option command G to make sure it, it's a clipping mask. There we go. And now we have this beautiful texture here over top of our lettering. So if I wanted to, you know, I, I have my original image here where it says bread and breakfast. I can remove all that type and then I can just type in my own and it's gonna be in the exact same lettering with the same coloring and have this texture back over top of it. And of course you can just have it say literally whatever you want. So there's so many different options that you can do when you can select a font, remove it from the original one, but then duplicate it using editable type. So you've got all the options in the world. You can just make it say whatever you want and basically look like the original font. Thanks so much. This is super fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna get more free tutorials, click on that subscribe button. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.